What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. If I ever find a little bastard of business. Dead Meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and we're engaged, and we like to get scared together. We're continuing with Creature Features Summer, and we're going to talk about arachnophobia this week, 1990. If you don't like spiders, don't watch this Don't episode. watch it. Sorry, Gressel. I even was having a, a time during this movie. Yeah, this this brought out some uh, heebie-jeebies from you that yeah. I wasn't aware existed. <laughs> I mean, I don't... You know, I mean, they're fucking gross. They, they're gross. I, I think it's more... It's not even just... Like, shots of spiders in nature are one thing, but the idea of dumping out some cereal and a giant spider, like a dead spider falls out of the cereal is just like makes me want to die. The little <laughs> spindly legs. I don't know, man. I don't mind spiders in real life, I guess. Yeah. I basically just pick up Lucy and put her next to them. And then I watch that down. go down. Cause that's a lot of fun. Apparently this movie upset a lot of uh, people like, because they, the unfair depiction of, I was like Spiders. the Jaws. Jaw- yeah, it was it was such a Jaws thing where, damn it, Spielberg. Spielberg needs to get his get his hands off of all these uh, incriminating animal movies. But but sharks are large, evolved, intelligent animals. Sure. I can't bring myself to feel that bad about spiders. I mean, they do bring up the point in the movie that they kill a ton of bugs you know no yeah from a practical utilitarian oh, yeah, like standpoint that's fine exist. from a moral ethical standpoint i just can't they're, when it comes to bugs i just don't fucking care we we've ha- talked about we've this had before. this discussion before on the podcast about whether or not it's okay to just kill bugs because and... they just branch off so much earlier along the evolutionary tree that my my brain is just like nah i think it's, i don't care it's about one you. of those things where it's like with fish i think People go back and forth on whether or not they can feel fish. Fish, I'm more ambiguous about because fish, I would love to fish and and eat a fish, mm-hmm. uh, and I would, don't think I would feel bad about that. No, if you eat it. But then again, I was funny. raised fishing, and it was normalized for me. But like, I they they feel pain, so that sucks for the fish. But again, they're they're an animal. They're, I don't know. I don't know. I don't it's, know. It's weird where we draw those lines. It is weird. Yeah. You got to pick where you draw the line. And for me, fish is like on the line. Bugs, fuck them. Well, we'll we'll talk about it some more. But apparently, spiders were not harmed in the making. I find of that this shocking. Film. There are I, shots in this movie where they drop something on a spider that we see, and then someone steps on it without I any will, editing. I will explain how they do that. It's actually really <laughs> neat. It's, okay. it's a simple trick that I think is is one really one simple cool. trick. One simple trick. You won't believe it. <laughs> Uh, if you're like me, you've never seen this movie before. I'd never seen this. Yeah. And so I was aware that there was a movie called Arachnophobia. Mm-hmm. And I was aware that there was a movie called Eight-Legged Freaks. Yes. And I was aware that David Arquette was an Eight-Legged Freaks. And that was the extent of my knowledge. And Scarlett, I think very young, Scarlett Johansson. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. But my understanding, uh, after watching this for sure, is that Eight-Legged Freaks is probably campier. Yes. And badder as a film i i would be willing to watch it and see if it's more entertaining i don't think arachnophobia was bad or boring I no it's perfectly fine it's it's a perfectly fine movie it's an amblin movie produced by steven spielberg and directed by frank marshall who was spielberg's producer on a lot of his big earlier films et Back to the Future, the the Indiana Raiders, Jones yeah. movies, yeah. So uh, this was dr- Frank Marshall's directorial debut, actually, and also Kathleen Kennedy, current president, president she's of president Disney, of Lucasfilm, of Lucasfilm, yeah. And I mean, she helped uh, bring Amblin Entertainment up along with Frank Marshall. So the They're three of them, her oh, and Frank Marshall, oh, they are mm-hmm. okay. Cool. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, yeah, the three of them have been a unit for a long time. This was Frank Marshall's directorial debut, but it's very much of those movies. Yeah. It's got characters making little quips. Uh, The tone is what I like, is that it's not afraid to just kind of be what it is. It's got some scary moments. It's got a bunch of dead bodies, but it still has some, like, light tone to it. 
Uh, John Goodman comes in. Yeah, I don't know why, but the title card that just says John Goodman as Delbert <laughs> <laughs> absolutely killed me. Just this, <laughs> who is Delbert? And Delbert's great. I'm a big fan of Delbert. I fucking love John Goodman. John, Goodman, love John Goodman is Goodman. is so versatile and like we were saying while we were watching the movie, he can play super cuddly and like you want him to be your dad. Uh, he's he's Sully in Monsters Inc. Yeah, you know? and, and of course and Roseanne. Roseanne. And yeah. uh, was he in stuff before Roseanne, or was that kind of his big break? I don't know. Because that show started in '88, so and I think it was immediately a big hit. So this movie is and Roseanne's John Goodman. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not sure. I don't really know. But then he can also play so fucking, fucking scary, scary, man. Like. And, and in between, too, just off. Like, you, you say the wrong thing, and he will just murder you. Well, uh, it's like Big Lebowski. He's, well, like, kind of a dick. And that like, Cloverfield Lane? Yeah, exactly. Holy shit. Yeah. Holy shit, he's scary there. I always think of him in Barton Fink. Yeah. Uh, just him running down the hallway screaming, I'll show you the life of the mind. Ah, I'll show you the life of the mind! I'll show you the life of the mind! He comes in real late. He's his own character. He looks like Bubbles from Trailer Park Boys. He's such a tra- <laughs> he is a Trailer Park Boys character for sure. He's got his own little theme music. Music in this movie, by the way, composed by Trevor Jones, who did the music for Dark Crystal and Labyrinth, which mm-hmm. is how I know him, because I always listen to the Labyrinth soundtrack because of Bowie. Oh, and yeah. so it was always like, David Bowie, Trevor Jones. David yeah. Bowie, Trevor Jones. Yeah. <laughs> but the end uh, credit song, uh, Jimmy Buffett's song. Was that made for this movie? Good. I'm pretty sure. It I was, had to I was trying to figure it out, because it's called Don't Bug Me, and it's about being a spider. And it's like, <laughs> leave me alone. I'm just a spider. I'm cool. Um, I like the idea that they were like, Fuck! People are gonna think that this movie is is like it's like Jaws. Like I bet, I bet Stephen was like, I don't want another Jaws. I can't have people mad at me for, for <laughs> uh, defamation of of spiders. All right, let's get Jimmy to write a song about like, but actually, spiders are cool and you shouldn't <laughs> hurt them. Do do do. Don't squish me or death wish me. That's all I have to say. Coming at the end so of a movie where like John Goodman's just spraying spiders just down, them. yeah, just like gassing <laughs> thousands of spiders to death. Yeah, it's so funny. What a weird song. I, you know, I, I feel like we don't really get any more songs made for end credits that are about the movie you just watched, like Deep Blue Sea. Mm-hmm. We need more of that. I, I can't think of the most recent example of that, but that's something we should bring back. It was big in the 90s. Yes. You know, Dr. Doolittle had its song. It's just, mm-hmm. they, all those songs or all those movies had a big pop hit that would come out with a music video featuring clips of the movie. Yes. And sometimes the artist interacting <laughs> with them. Screened in with yeah. characters. <laughs> for sure. More that doesn't of happen that. now, does it? I don't think so. I can't think of the last song that was maybe, I think Disney Happy. still does it. Oh, happy, sure. Yeah. Uh, happy. Minions, yeah. Yeah, right? Minnie Mans mm-hmm. fucking pulling that truck there down the highway yeah. for us. Thanks, Minnie Mans. <laughs> oh, yeah, starring Jeff Daniels. Starring Jeff Daniels, Pre- Michigan's Dumb and Dumber. own, even though he wasn't born in Michigan, which I was surprised by. He was born in Georgia, I think. But he oh, moved he's a to, bootstrapper? He moved to Michigan when carpet? he was like six. Carpet bagger. Is that what that is? Uh, yeah, people who move specifically, I believe, historically from the south to the north. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was like six months old or something. So he, I mean, he's, he's from Michigan. Yeah, he counts. Um, yeah, this would have been after, because he would have done Gettysburg, Purple Rose of Cairo, and Rag, because Ragtime was like what made him famous, I think. He's just dumb and dumber for me. But he's also like a very good dramatic actor. Oh, for sure. I think, yeah, it's weird. Dumb and Dumber is like such a, a um, an anomaly for his filmography. Because when he was that's... casting it, people were like, Jeff Daniels yeah, is going to do a comedy? He's so good. Yeah. Other blonde actor I really enjoy, Julian Sands, who's one of the oh, first yeah. people who shows up. I didn't know he was in this, and I freaked out. You got out. real excited. I love Julian Sands. Julian Sands, I know him, um, which weird, weird for a horror podcast that I don't know him for the Argento movie he was in or... Uh, He's also in... Which Argento was he in? He's in his uh, Argento's Phantom of the Opera, which okay. is a fucked up movie. Uh, it's, a, it's a weird take on Phantom. 
There's some weird sex stuff in it and with rats and it's weird. Um, sex with rats? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> But he's also in Warlock, and that's a Steve Miner movie. That's why, yeah. Oh, I see. I have, okay. Yeah, so he's in a Steve Miner movie. But I know Julian Sands from A Room with a View, which is one of my favorite movies slash books. It's so good, and he's the romantic lead in that. He, to me, is like, you know how some people, when they see Colin Firth pop up in anything, it's like, oh, my God, it's Mr. Darcy. Mm -hmm. That's that's me with Julian Sands. I'm like, yeah. oh, my God, it's George. And I just, <laughs> he's always George to me. He's just this romantic lead, and I was very excited to see him show up. He's still looking pretty much like he did in that movie. He just has really long movie? hair. That was 85, I think. So this okay. is only a few years after. Yeah. Uh, that movie's great, by the way. <laughs> Helena Bonham Carter. She's oh, like yeah, 19 real young. in it. Daniel Day-Lewis. Um, I think he was nominated for an Oscar for that movie. Um, God, what movie was he nominated? Judy Dench, uh, Maggie Smith. It's got it's got all your British favorites <laughs> in it, and it's so romantic and happy and good. If you want something nice right now, I feel like a lot of us could, you know, maybe we we need a nice happy movie. That's my suggestion for you if you're into that. Yeah, he kind of opens up this movie as Dr. Atherton, a bug doctor. He's a bug scientist. I I wasn't sure what this whole, because the movie opens up and I'm like, are we watching Anaconda on accident? Because yeah. it's a shot of just the Amazon River and it's the 90s and we've got some more Zen woodwinds, you know, <laughs> like the Brookstone CD sampler uh, yeah. woodwinds. <laughs> like, wait a minute, we're watching Anaconda again on accident. But no, we're, it's this, it's this, rainforest expedition which I, i'm not still unsure if this is on the up and up yeah this seems because they go really in there shady. they gas a whole fucking oh tree God. of insects and just drop and it's 1990 we should know better you know if this was made in 1970s 1960s i could totally see a scientist like yeah sure f go fuck off to the rainforest and just gas an entire <laughs> section of it to collect bugs great we don't care about the environment but now i feel like <laughs> you can't just go do that i feel like this is shady yeah i don't know if that's if it's uh above board no i don't think it is at all because we've got it's it's julian sands and his crew they have a they have a guide who is native to the area and we have this photographer who is tagging along to take pictures of Manly. bugs yes photographer Mendy. yeah and they just gas this tree they set up these little bug catching funnels below it yeah gas it up and then they just collect it like rainwater and i was like oh they're knocking all these bugs out so they can study them and he's like no they're fucking dead they should all be dead i love too that every time in real life too not even just in movies but field science equipment like this always just looks like fucking trash it looks like oh yeah junk. it looks like i don't know some something that you come across at a yard sale and you're like hey what's this and they're like i don't know but i'll give you two like <laughs> yeah. a dollar you want for like a dollar or just like yeah i had a i had this hobby a few years back i don't really do this it's anymore. like a lawn you game <laughs> yeah, it, yeah for sure it's like i think of apollo 13 where you know they're they're fucking stuck in space and everyone back at ground control is like all right here's what's on the ship and it's just a pile of garbage because <laughs> yeah. everything is made of garbage <laughs> like it's amazing <laughs> so but what happens is yeah all these butterflies start falling out of the tree and it looks like a fucking elephant you know elephant, <laughs> yeah. the elephant where it's like that i don't know if they still make those or what but it was this <laughs> this toy from when we were kids where it's this elephant and you turn it on and it basically is just like a leaf blower and it, it would shoot butterfly, like plastic butterflies up out of its nose and, and you, you would catch, catch them with nets. So it's just butterflies falling down. But that's what this looks like, except it's real and they're all dead. He's elephant, the elephant, he is butterflies everywhere, watch them go. Except these spiders, they're not dead, even though they should be. And one of them, they they are looking like Animal Crossing ranchos. They're big, yeah. And they sound like them too. They're tarantulas. like tarantulas. <laughs> they hiss. They hiss, which They're I don't disgusting. know if that's no, accurate. They, yeah, tarantulas hiss. I think. Really? Yeah, because I was reading an article. I have a, a couple articles here God, about the effects gross. because I was so curious about how a lot of this was done. Because mm -hmm. the effects in those are very good to the point where James and I were like, 
Did, yeah, they definitely they murdered a bunch spiders, of spiders. But you're saying they didn't? No. Or like if they did, it was a total, you know, they weren't intentionally like, no, nah, there's spiders. Fuck them. <laughs> Step on them for the scene. Uh, no, apparently the there's like a main tarantula. We see a couple like big tarantula looking spiders throughout. I think they're all played by this one tarantula named Big Bob. Big Bob. Who apparently was eight inches long, a bird eating tarantula. Fuck that. The fact that you could walk that thing around like a dog is not okay. (laughs) That's so big. But apparently for some reason it really didn't like Jeff Daniels and like (laughs) reared up and hissed at him a bunch. Oh, God. I know. I'd be like, no, I don't care what I signed. I'm out. I'm out of this You find a different six foot three actor to fill this role. I'm done here. (laughs) Dude, it's so maybe Big Bob just knew that his character was supposed to be really afraid of spiders and was like, no, I'm I'm, I'm getting into it. I'm helping. (laughs) Yeah, he's like when the horror movie villain doesn't break ca- doesn't break character on set <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> like i need them to be afraid of me yeah and apparently big bob also <laughs> wore a um like a an attachment to his little his abdomen like the the bat the butt part so he had a fake butt to make him look even bigger oh he's like ricky movie. martin did Ricky Martin wear a fake butt? I think Ricky Martin wore Shut butt pants. Up. Can no, I get confirmation? Uh, can I get confirmation? <laughs> I'm pretty Are you sure. Serious? It was at least a rumor when we were kids. Okay, let me just say that finding out he was gay did not phase me at all. But this is like <laughs> <laughs> this is rocking my world a little butt bit. Has this? No, I refuse to believe. He is also rumored to be wearing padded panties. It's a rumor. Ricky Martin is allegedly wearing styrofoam butt pads. Were you reading this? Internet. Okay. Well, I... But then here's uh, Ricky Martin showed his butt on TV and the internet lost it from (laughs) mamaslatinas.com. Oh, okay. (laughs) Fake news. They gave this spider a nice little butt pad and they painted some, I think, uh, the fake butt part has some like purple so to make it look like a new species so it's not just okay. like that's a tarantula it's a, that's a tarantula <laughs> that's not a new species of anything it's just a tarantula but yeah these the tarantula is like not susceptible to this gas they're just super strong they don't die so julian sands is like hell yeah let's bring these back with us to camp but one of them hitches a ride in a backpack yeah, i think it climbs into their gear so on the way back to camp it's like hiding out they have a little stowaway they were tuckies tucking in the, their stuff and, and then it ends up when uh uh manly photographer manly goes mm-hmm. to take a nap he gets bit it's got to be hard to act like okay now your throat's closing up mm-hmm. um and it's a horror movie so we have to make this death scary but the actual death process in this is just you get bit really quick so mm-hmm. okay we've got to make it dramatic this guy sells it he's good <laughs> Yeah, so R.I.P. that guy. But they're just like, oh, he died of a fever or some shit. Yeah, Send him he back. had a fever earlier that he mentions it near the beginning. So they think, oh, man, wow, that fever must have actually been really bad. Whatever, put him in this, um, <laughs> this <laughs> rickety-ass box we built out of these trees nearby and just... Send him on home. Send him home. And wouldn't you know it, a rancho hops inside. Yep, it's in the coffin, so it's on its way home. Do we know what state... The, so California. Oh, it is California. Yeah. Oh, it's just like uh, rural like a, California. It's like a, yeah, small because they small town Canaima. Cana- yeah, Canaima. They move from, from San Francisco. And they, I think they say like we move south. So I think it's just like okay. southern Southern California. Uh, yeah, because uh, <laughs> the this beginning scene in Venezuela, which they actually shot in Venezuela, I which saw is cool. That, yeah, it feels like a different movie. You know, it lasts, I don't know how long, it lasts 10, 15 minutes maybe, but Mm -hmm. that ends and then we're in small town America and I'm like, oh, this is going to be the movie, This is the movie, yeah. Yeah. It's not Anaconda It's not an adventure. Yeah, Yeah, no, this is small town being besieged by, uh, okay, I get it now. Yeah, when we were, and this movie's a little long, by the way, it's 110 minutes. I remember we both, (laughs) maybe like halfway through this, we just realized do that stuff in Venezuela feels like it was another movie. Yeah. That feels like it was years ago. See, for me, what you can get rid of is the, all that spider fighting at the end, the Jeff Daniels spider oh, fight in the end. That. It had, it go it has too many it goes, beats to it. It goes it. on for a little bit. Yeah, because he like lights it on fire and then it comes out again. Then he hits it with a nail gun. And then before that, he's fighting the queen. There's like, oh, there's a queen and a general. It's like it's a lot. It's a yeah. lot, and yeah. it's and it's all got that like 
Amblin Entertainment y. There's like a, sp- a sparking fuse box in the oh, end yeah. to add those like blue it's flickering Univer- lights. Universal, uh, yeah, theme park style For effects. For sure. Really and it's big, like, broad, yeah. Okay, I get it. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. So yeah, we're in Kanema now. Definitely a fudge and taffy type looking town. Okay. You know, that's like part of their tourist trade. You buy your fudge and taffy there. Just mm-hmm. very charming looking small town. And Jeff Bridges, or not Jeff Bridges. I almost this thought Jeff be, Bridges too. I would be interested in seeing There this you go. Jeff, Jeff Daniels gets, he he doesn't get along with Big Bob. You know, he leaves, bring in Jeff Bridges. Dude, and then it's Jeff Bridges and Delbert. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so yeah, our, our other Jeff <laughs> moves <laughs> to this town because he has been offered a job as the town doctor because the doctor is apparently retiring. So Jeff's going to replace him. But then he gets there. They unpack, they buy a house, they do all this shit, and this doctor says, just kidding, I'm not retiring, so you don't have a job. Fuck you, guy. Are you allowed to do that? I don't know. Legally, probably. Morally, fuck that guy. Mm -hmm. This Jeff Daniels just moved him, his wife, his two kids to a middle-of-nowhere town, bought a house. Yeah, he won't stop bitching about it either. There's some weird jokes in this that I don't think age well and that I don't even understand what the joke is. One that I'm thinking of is the they... The one? Yes! To enjoy the fact that since we no longer live in San Francisco, we no longer have to refer to this as pasta. Now that we don't live in San Francisco, we don't have to call this pasta. And I'm like motioning to a plate of spaghetti and I'm like, <laughs> why, it's, I, it's what is pasta the fancy joke? term I don't in 1990? Know what the joke I is. think the joke is in 1990 it the term pasta may have been a coastal elite way to refer to your your spaghetti maybe. What the fuck? Maybe? That's my guess. I all this it's that kind of line that really interests me in uh like excavating popular culture from the United States and seeing like just like little differences. Like nowadays, no one would fucking blink if you say pasta. pasta. Everyone knows it's that. But like what, 30 years ago, pasta was an elite term that only San Franciscans would use? There's definitely movies where sushi is treated as a like, oh, weirdo food. Yeah, it's like, what sushi? Ew, it's raw. What the fuck? Yeah, oh, no. Can I have some real food, please? Like, yeah. (laughs) That evolution of how food is used in film is really weird. Weird. Or it seems like people in this town have never heard of Venezuela. Mm-hmm. They're like, Vena, I don't know, some South American country. Yeah. It's like, it's Venezuela. Or like, from, so I, I just rewatched The Sopranos, and one thing that reminds me of this is that one of the characters in it does yoga and. It, is it like a weird thing? Yeah, it's, it's like, <laughs> oh, she's so weird and like new agey. That That's just she does 20 years yoga. ago. I know. It's pretty wild. I mean, granted, she's also into all kinds of other new agey bullshit. And, mm-hmm. But, like, the fact that yoga is also kind of lumped into that is really weird. See, it's stuff like that that makes me think, oh, you know what? There is a, a progress of some sort being made in culture to where we can look at things that maybe originated elsewhere in America and not think of them as weirdo foreign shit anymore. It's just like, oh, yeah, pasta, yoga. Those are regular things, yeah. not like yeah. Woo-woo. Those are just things that we do, <laughs> and yeah. Anyway, there, there's also a town mortician, a yes. coroner, and he gets that body back of the manly boy. Yeah, and he's all desecrated, he's shriveled up. He's got no more blood in him. The mortician's played by Roy Brocksmith. Who, fun fact? <laughs> no, god damn it! I'm looking at it right now. God damn he it! He plays the. the- <laughs> He plays the man in Psycho 1998 who is supposed to be the Alfred Hitchcock character. He's the Hitchcock stand-in. He's standing outside scolding Gus Van Sant in in Gus Van Sant's director cameo. Final uh, credited film role as well for that guy. Fuck, are you serious? Yeah, he died three years later. uh, Kind of young, I think. 56 from diabetes. But uh, what a bookend to an incredible career. Um, he's married in this movie, by the way, to Mimi from the Drew Carey show. Yeah, which Kathy is awesome. Kinney. Oh man, and they honestly, they I would hang with them and watch. Yeah, Wheel they of watch Fortune. Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. They they have their popcorn. 
and their cans of Coke. And I think I've said it before on the podcast. You put that popcorn in your mouth, and then before you swallow it, you take a sip of Coke, and it kind of dissolves the popcorn, and that mixture it creates, I'm telling you, it tastes so fucking good. I don't know it's if I tried that. It's this popping popcorn before. slushy in your mouth, and you just <laughs> chew it up then, and it mixes all the flavors, and it's so fucking good. I will stand by that. I'll, I'll try it sometime. It's messy. Cause you're stiffing, you're just stuffing Ew, your mouth that's... full of popcorn and soda, and then it's just like popcorn is falling out. Ew! Not from the slushy part, but when you're stuffing it in initially. Okay, I thought you just, it's just falling out of your mouth. Like, <laughs> no, you gotta fun? keep your lips sealed after you add the liquid, sure. or else it'll get real messy. This, oh god! This anyway, is a very good episode of the podcast. It's a good episode. <laughs> So this, the mortician, he receives that the photographer's body from Venezuela because that's this dude's hometown. He opens up this crate and, whoa, this body looks like shit. <laughs> it just looks like absolute shit. It's been desiccated is the correct term, right? Where As they point out in the yeah, movie, yeah, drained of blood. Drained of blood. And so, you know, of course, this guy thinks, oh boy, these these damn Venezuelans, they don't know how to preserve <laughs> their bodies, right? It looks like uh, Mrs. Bates a little bit. Yeah. It's just this husk <laughs> that he gets back. So that's fun. By the way, I love also we get the gag in this movie, the mortician just eating food and stuff around always dead happens, bodies. Yeah. It's always the gag. Uh, the spider crawls out of that casket without this guy ever noticing, mm -hmm. goes outside after chasing a dog and a cat. <gasps> There's this little cat. Okay, there's a cat in the in the funeral home or in the coroner's office, whatever, and he picks up a sandwich and walks away with it. He just takes the bread slice. So he gets cute. like half the sandwich, but he gets away with it. Snipes the sandwich, <laughs> and it's so precious. The I was really scared for the cat for a second. Yeah, I thought the rancho was going to kill him, but the rancho just chases the dog and cat out through the doggy door. Rancho follows, gets grabbed by a bird. Yeah. But a bird only makes it so far and then gets bitten by the rancho and dies and falls Right outside Jeff Daniels' new home. Mm -hmm. Welcome to your new home, Welcome Rancho. Welcome to your pet cemetery house. Yeah, this Th is very pet cemetery. This movie almost turns into pet cemetery. Because, I mean, he's moving to a small town to be the only doctor. Like, yeah. That's pet cemetery. Yep. And uh, he <laughs> later a a football player dies under his care. <laughs> yep. So I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, they 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 find that spider in the house and they uh, don't want to kill it. And it's like, sometimes... Dead is better. Sometimes dead is better. Because what they do with the spider in the house is they put it in the barn that they have on their property. And then that spider, which is a big spider by normal spider standards, but then that spider fucking has sex. It mates with, with the, the, the Venezuela the rancho. spider. Yeah. Big and Bob. it's like intercut. Yeah, Big Bob gets some. Big and it's Bob intercut. With like the parents doing with it. With the parents yeah. doing it too. Implied doing it because this is a Amazon sure. film. Although we do get a, just a close up on cleavage later, which is teenage cleavage. <laughs> it's it's like high school it's girl like cleavage. Okay. It's really weird. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there there's an intercut sex scene between Jeff Daniels and, and his wife. And these two spiders just and like, these two spiders oh. starting to look, fucking make love. Apparently the so there's two types of spiders in this movie. There's Big Bob. Big Bob. And then there's this other spider that we see a gajillion of. And that's mm. apparently the Avondale, Avondale spider. They are native to Australia. They are harmless to humans and apparently known to be sociable. I don't know if that means they're, they can be friendly to people or if they're just, they're social and they congregate in groups of <laughs> spiders. The but, Avon Barksdale spider? Uh, apparently it's the Avon Barksdale. But apparently that's the same kind of spider that was used in the first Sam Raimi Spider-Man to turn him into a Spider-Man. Ah. Yeah, so that's See, nice. Jeff, you missed out, man. You could have been a Spider-Man. I guess that they, I guess that uh, uh, Frank Marshall and Spielberg and them had basically spider auditions for this movie <laughs> because they, I get, they didn't want to use expl like all tarantulas because they're like, it's a bit overdone. Like that's kind of the go-to spider if you Fair. need like a big scary spider. Mm -hmm. And that's why they made Big Bob look different by adding this like fake, piece onto him but uh so they were like all right let's have spider auditions and see what kind of spiders can come in and do stunts essentially so they auditioned all kinds of species of spiders and they found that this species they could maneuver by using like you know wires that are invisible to camera by like you know 
like placing them certain ways so they won't go a certain direction or oh. like putting them on magnetic plates so I think they can move them around. Oh. And one way that there's a few shots where there's like spiders that kind of walk a certain way and then they like go backwards. Yeah. And we were like, how did they get the spider? Like, it's Cause spider it's like, acting. It, it's like hiding from him in the, the final fight. Mm -hmm. Although that might be, don't, didn't they use like an animatronic? Yes, for, the okay. end, the end, the queen and the general are animatronic spiders. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, in close ups, I believe, I think in like kind of far away shots, it's, it's, Big Bob again. Big okay. Bob. But apparently uh, the, the spiders did not like the sensation at scent or otherwise of lemon pledge. So they <laughs> oh. would put down lemon pledge and so a spider would walk up to it and like back away from it. Ooh. So they really like they, you know, were able to kind of manipulate these spiders without, you know, harming them in any way. Uh, do you want me to reveal how they were able to squish them? Yes, without? please, because it's, it's so killing neat. me. So it happens a couple times in this. One is a book is dropped on a spider, and another is John Goodman just, just steps stepping on one. On one. Yeah. So there were two things they kind of did. One was they, you know, you have that many spiders on set. You know, insects don't live that long anyway, so they would just, you know, sometimes you have dead spiders, so you could, you know, have dead spiders as stand-ins for certain things. So if you need to crush a spider, it's dead already, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Or what they did with the the John Goodman scene is his boot is hollow. No on the inside. way! I was gonna joke that that's nope, what they did. That's exactly. That's what they did. And I'm guessing that's what the book was too. Is it was a hollow, so you look at it underneath, and it's like concave. Oh. So John Goodman's shoe was like concave on the inside. So ah. when he stepped on the spider, it would just be hiding under there until they needed to do another take. Oh, that makes me think of the don't starve spiders. And they're like, <laughs> I thought that was really clever. Yeah. It would just kind of curl up in there. <laughs> <laughs> so Jeff Daniels is afraid of spiders. He has the titular arachnophobia. arachnophobia. And he, he, he keeps, he mentions, you know, oh, you know, I had a, an incident was, you know something in his past so i'm like what did a spite like he did a spider kill his family in a drive-by or something like what's going on with here? six guns yeah for, for real. like like what kind of traumatic i'm very interested but all it is is that he claims so this could just be a fake fucking memory jeff they happen easily that they do implanted memories where you just think something happened and it didn't uh he Claims that when he was a baby, he was two. He was two, which you don't remember you don't, things sorry. from when you're two. But no. he <laughs> claims that when he was in his crib, a giant spider crawled in and like touched his leg. Yeah, that's the, that's it. That's the backstory to the titular arachnophobia. It might not have even happened. <laughs> It's like I thought maybe he was, you know, could have been like hiking with his dad and, and like fell like, into a hole filled, filled with, with them or yeah, some something. Yeah, or like yeah, his dad got bit by a spider by on a, a hike. Poisonous, something, you know. Something. No, a fucking spider crawled on him. A spider touched him once on his leg. <laughs> You know, his naked baby leg, he and says. He's like, he just got to grab like I was it. wearing a diaper, and it touched my naked My naked, baby hairless thigh. baby like, thigh. like, all right, stop, Jeff. <laughs> he's like, okay, bud, we got it. Yeah, we're good. Uh, his, what, what's his wife in? It, his wife is played by, because I don't want to write her off, even though the movie kind oh, of does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she's just She's not wife. much of a character. Uh, yeah, for sure. She's so Harley Jane Kozak, who, she got her career in, she started in House on Sorority Row, which yes. is pretty cool. Yeah, that was a movie that I watched with patrons once upon a time during a stream, and the biggest thing we I took away from it. I was wondering if we'd watch that together. No, but. you weren't there. Yeah. But we watched it, and the biggest takeaway from that was the big guys in a pool, and he's He's like, I'm a sea pig. <laughs> that he says it twice, I think. Because what? Don't they kill their like their house mother in the pool or and then something? They try to cover it yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's one of the. the it's a very um, oh my gosh, uh, Lois. Uh, I know what you did last summer. The author. Oh, I forgot her name. Lois Duncan, maybe. Yeah, so that's Is a. It? I okay. think it. Yeah, but that that sounds like the plot to one of her books. Yeah, she's around. She's not afraid of spiders. No, and she even sees the one in the beginning that's like crawling around in the kids' toys. It's crawling around on a car, like a, a red sports car toy. Oh, yeah, and I'm like, we better that. see this spider drive a car. It didn't. They tease us with that I car know, a number of times. You really <laughs> wanted hoping, to happen, but she looks at it, and it, first of all, it's huge. Like it's if a big I spider, even like. Most people, if they saw this in their home, would freak the fuck out. And her reaction, just, oh, poor thing. And she just scoops it up like it's like good for you, I guess. But no, 
So that toy's going in the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, so that spider mates with the big old spider, and then they start building a little nest in the barn. And so she's like, she finds all these webs everywhere, and she takes Jeff Daniels out, and she's ba- she doesn't say exposure therapy, but she's like, it's therapy yeah, to get here, over let's, it. Yeah, just confront it. It's borderline, just like I can't stand how weak you are, Jeff. <laughs> get in this barn and look at these webs, damn it! But then he accidentally what falls into a bunch. No, he. Uh, a dead rat wrapped up in a spider web hits him in the face. And then I immediately throw up everywhere. (laughs) That's it. I do like his line that it's the eight-legged Frank Lloyd Wright. So, yeah, the town doctor isn't retiring, so Jeff Daniels doesn't have patience except this one saucy little old lady. She's a hot old lady. She's a hot old lady, man. She joins the ranks of Grandma from The the Visit. visit. Mm -hmm. Like, she's a hot old lady. Yeah, actor Mary Carver playing Margaret Hollins. Broadway film, TV actress. She's done it all. I was looking at her wiki. Yeah, she has that kind of old school aura of just actress. She's an actress. And you know that if you hung out with her, she would tell you all kinds of filthy stories about all the people in Hollywood she's fucked. Like, that's the vibe I get. And even the the character, you can tell she, she was is the saucy, town hottie. Yeah. She, uh, she wants to be his patient. Because yeah. <laughs> she doesn't like the town doctor because yeah, that guy good, sucks. Good for her. Yeah, also the town doctor sucks. And Jeff Daniels takes her off some heart medication that she was on uh, because there's, like, been a change in medicine and her heart rate's yeah, not... It's a, it, I like this because I he takes like her off too. the medicine and then later she gets bit by a spider and dies and then the town doctor is like it was a heart attack she had a bad heart and then finds out jeff daniels took her off the heart medication and blames jeff Dan- and i love that element of this movie i did too i think the whole doctor thing where people start calling him dr death mm-hmm. and i think that whole like people suspect him at first or, you know because everyone he treats <laughs> just gets bitten by a spider and dies because i think you know I, I wonder if they struggled initially with like well how do we introduce some conflict here that's more interesting than just spiders show up and start biting people because again that's the thing with creature movies that's tough <laughs> yeah. when you don't have you know a, a, a Big Bob is not Big Bob. <laughs> he's not mentally complex. He's not going <laughs> to give you the, you know, cuz like often in creature movies you have to have it so where the conflict between people is what makes the movie interesting. Um and so. without John Voight running around, we have yeah. uh we have the town doctor who works as a great. Yeah, uh, so I think that yeah, that whole plot with you know the conflict between these two doctors like old and new school and medical. there and then there's also a city versus rural element yeah, everyone's it's, it's like good. big shot because there's a fucking sheriff running around here who's played lloyd his yeah. name's lloyd that's all i can think of is lloyd, lloyd. <laughs> <laughs> sheriff lloyd played by Stuart pankin pankin who was not only the voice of daddy dinosaur and dinosaurs yeah. but i don't know why i watched uh, oh, he was the commander Plank in the Xenon trilogy films. Of course, I know him from that, from the Xenon movies. Mm-hmm. And then he's in Honey, We Shrunk Ourselves, mm-hmm. which for some reason was the Honey, We Blank movie that I watched the most. It okay. was the third. It was direct-to-video. Rick Moranis was the only returning cast member. But for some reason, I watched it a whole bunch. Yeah. And it's when the parents get shrunk. But oh, okay. So he he was a big part of my childhood between Xenon and oh, that movie. Fine. But he's a ignorant sheriff running he's, around here. He's very good in this. He is the most unlikable small town sheriff. Yeah. Like, he plays it so well. He's just, like, as much as he's a walking stereotype of just a shitty cop, he makes it so interesting. Because <laughs> he's such a toady, you know? You can tell that he, his character... Because that other guy is always telling him to shut the fuck shut up. Shut the fuck up, Lloyd. <laughs> uh As much as this dude loves pushing around his authority, like he gives uh, Jeff Daniels this shitty parking ticket, just cut. You can tell he gets off on it. But he also, whenever someone else who is in a position of authority shows up, who is a person he respects, he loves being like obedient to that person. And it's such a funny way to play that guy. Uh, Yeah, big fan of of him. He's the one who finds a spider in the cereal box. Oh yeah, later on. And I vomit everywhere. Uh, yeah. 
So when the saucy old lady dies, who just is just such an attractive older woman. I know. Uh, she dies oh. and Jeff Daniels wants an autopsy done. And the old doctor's like, never. Never. Which I didn't know was a thing. I guess it makes sense if you're of some mentality where bodies are sacred and you don't want to dissect them. Uh, the football coach, who we meet at this like party this like yes, this- the party scene is really fun okay i do want to talk about this party scene because they have a isn't it like a welcoming party for jeff daniels it's, no because he's told to go there and rub elbows so it was going to take place regardless i think yeah it's some kind of it's just, just town, kind of party. town party i yeah. could watch this party i could meet people from this town for an entire movie like everyone who rolls in every like this whole town is populated by gary larson cartoon characters like the far side okay yeah because you have the 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 family where the dad's the football coach the youngest daughter wants to blow up bullfrogs with uh firecrackers the the older daughter who is the the teenage cleavage we see later she's later, going to college for gym for gym she's gonna major in gym his oldest son is uh the the quarterback yeah. and then when another character is it jeff daniels his wife call is like oh a bit of nepotism there his wife is like no we're baptists we're, no we're ba- yeah i love that line that, that family <laughs> is the same vibe as david keckner's family in krampus oh yeah we're like yeah, we're, like we're just like we have like you know these husky large kids <laughs> and they could kick your kids' asses. And then there's the the parents of the photographer Manley who died, and oh, the, yeah. the mom's She's just sad, getting drunk. drunk. She's getting it's, sad, it's, drunk. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it's just a really fun parade of weird townies, and they're all wearing like pastel colors because it's the early '90s. Um, it's but, good. But yeah. Also, lots of deviled eggs. Just like we see no the opening shot there, of man. this. I do love deviled I eggs. I love deviled but eggs. But the, the opening shot of this party is the is fucking Lloyd, the sheriff, just huffing this tray of deviled. <laughs> he has his face right in there and is like just, mm, mm. he's like wafting. And that's like an outside tray. And then we cut to the kitchen where they're bringing, bringing out more out deviled more eggs. De- and I always wonder, is it a joke? Because later the whole focus is like, we got to find these spider eggs. Is it almost like yeah, a, well, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, yeah. Although I will say, big tip for deviled eggs, what you do is you take those little, what are the little tiny pickles called? Like capuchins or something? Or is that a monkey? That's a monkey. Okay. Well, you take the little, whatever they're called, the little baby bit, and you chop those up. Capons? Capers. No, capers are a different thing. Also very delicious. Capons are birds. All right. We're learning a whole bunch of words right now on this podcast, but you take the little tiny pickles, you chop them up, and you put those in those deviled eggs. It gives you a bit of a crunch. And the dill flavor. Dude, dude, James does make the best deviled eggs. It's my Thanksgiving food. Yeah. The deviled eggs. They go eggs. fast. They, they're they gone. Mm-hmm. I make a bunch. It's great. <laughs> um, so the football coach dad is like, hey, I know that you need some patience. The the hot old lady was dude, your only one and I she died. Think, my Okay, this is how my brain, I, I did finish The Sopranos a few days ago, but my, but my brain is still <laughs> like such, like just Sopranos brain that when this dad is like, I know I, you you need some more more business. Okay, come meet me at my gym at three o'clock tomorrow. And I thought it was like I'm three gonna get. Three in the morning. I thought it was like I'm gonna get revenge because I think you killed. Oh yeah. You know you killed. Yeah, this you gotta lady. you gotta reacclimate to non Sopranos media. Huh? Yes, I genuinely <laughs> thought it was like oh I heard you need some more business here. Come up, come up, come visit me tomorrow. I'll give you some business. And I thought I was gonna fucking you know kneecap him with some. No, it's for him to go down a line and feel up these high school boys to check them for hernias yeah we're touching taints in this movie lots of taints it's a whole conga line of taints of them turn uh turning their heads and coughing which you didn't get and for anyone else uh presumably I, ladies I have to, out there i've always i'm like what i don't know i the turn your head and cough thing is to check for hernias. for hernias and like i told you i had a hernia a few years ago and then i had a hernia scare maybe a year ago mm-hmm. and so i've gotten the turn my head and cough thing a lot lately and yeah they like feel they put your fingers down there on your little taint there and you turn your head and you cough and if there is a tear right there they will feel that upon the cough. I don't know why they're turning your head. Whatever. They know what they're doing. They're doctors. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, last time I went, no hernia. All right. There you go. The there more you go. You know. I also don't even know why. Like, we could just cut that scene where it's like, all right, boys, line up and get ready to turn your head and cough and drop them. End scene. 
we don't need to see Jeff Daniels go down this whole line and like mime touch. And all I guess these. it's to show his humiliation and this like is, the yeah, low sure. point of him as this town's doctor, backup doctor, because later spoiler alert that the old doctor gets bit by a spider and dies. And like, there's a just one scene of them being like, Oh man, that guy died. Cut to them setting up their new office. All super happy. Like now we're the <laughs> yeah. town doctor and business is booming. Jeff Daniels just pissing on that dude's grave. Like, I mean, Fuck oh, that guy. Is. Yeah, that guy fucking sucks. Uh, Although who the doctor, the old doctor, is married yes. to grandma from, from Happy, Happy Gilmore, Gilmore, dude. Frances Bay is amazing at everything. She also is in a few David Lynch things, like Twin Peaks and stuff. Yeah. Like Fire Walk with me. But uh, Blue Velvet, I'm I'm seeing. Yeah, she's, she's fucking She's in amazing. a Critters movie. Yes. She's in In the Mouth of Madness. Yep. That's what I remember seeing her from recently. There's another, I'm trying, I'm looking, uh, there's another actor I saw who is a, oh, Peter Jason, I forget who he plays in this, but uh, he also is a carpenter regular. Um, Peter Jason. Oh, Peter Jason is the is the coach dad. Okay, he shows up in a lot of. He's in, also in, in the Mouth of Madness and like Ghosts of, of Mars and stuff. Oh. Like he's yeah a John Carpenter regular. But uh oh man, I love her. She's always so funny. Yeah, Francis Bay. She's great. Ah. Uh, Anyway, he checks these football kids. One of them puts on a helmet that a spider got into. It bites him. He dies. Yeah. That's how he's So now it's yet another incident of he interacts with a patient and then that patient dies. Bad reputation to get in a small town. Yeah. That's Mm -hmm. when he's starting to be called uh, Dr. Death by all the kids. But pretty quickly after that. The old doctor gets bitten and dies, uh, and... He- After he does his nightly treadmill walk, this this doctor's a treadmill in his bedroom, so his wife, Frances <laughs> Bay, is in bed and is like, why don't we just go for walks outside? And he's like, I can't. I, th- I need to know how far I've walked. I need to be able to track the, like all, the, all these stats. Are you going to compare him to yes. me now? <laughs> Oh my god, this is me and James's old people. I'm like, why don't we just go for a walk outside? And you're like, I can't. Gotta add the numbers to my spreadsheet. Fair. But yeah, he gets bit because <laughs> there's a spider in his slipper. And yep. Yep. R.I.P. Jeff Daniels notices there's a spider bite on his toe, and he demands that all the bodies be exhumed. Be exhumed, and that. Well, like, oh man, Lloyd, Sheriff Lloyd is not happy about that. But then there's the the, the character who is like ordering Lloyd around me, like, shut the fuck up, Lloyd, is like, what, the town head doctor? I'm not sure He's who like, I don't know explain. what that guy is because he kind of disappears shortly after this. He's but he's what, some doctor? authority figure yeah. who is able to tell the others uh, to what to do. And eventually he's like, okay, now we're going to listen to Jeff Daniels. So now he's in charge. I'm done with this movie. Bye. Yeah. It's a weird role. He's a weird character that I never landed on. Cause I kept mixing him up with football dad. Mm. Cause they're both just kind of like middle-aged guys. who so I'm like, eh, sure. I can't tell them apart. Oh, before I forget to mention to, uh, Henry Jones, who plays Dr. Metcalf, our, our mean old doctor, He was in The Bad Seed. That's like what people, if you know him from anything, you would know him from that, which that was a movie we talked about on our Creepy Kids podcast. He he like originated the role on Broadway and then when it was adapted to film, he played him in the film too, which is pretty neat. So weird. You might actually have a, you know, if you knew him at all, you might have an image of him in your head as a much younger man in in that movie. But uh, yeah. Yeah, this other dude, I, I wasn't quite sure what his job was. <laughs> yeah, he's, whatever. You know, if I were writing a kill count, I would just try to ignore him in the script because yeah. I think you can just write around him, whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so they find out there's bug bites, and then they it leads back to Dr. Uh, Atherton. Oh, yeah, Atherton, it leads back to Julian, Julian Sands. Sands. So this is when I, I realized, okay, so he is a university. Do- like, he's... He's legit. He's not like some black market weirdo. <laughs> yeah. So I, I still don't know what's going on at the beginning. Instead, <laughs> instead of going to the town himself to check it out, he sends his assistant, who we were introduced to in a shot, where he's like he's standing in the foosball. foreground. But like the foosball table is below so frame. So we don't know what. Yeah. Like you figure. But and it, it had to have been intentionally shot was like this. Was it though? I don't, I don't know because he's sitting there. He looks like he's jerking. He off. looks like he's jerking, and off. he's, he's really like, happy about it. <laughs> and he's like moving his arm. So he sends that guy, the foosball guy, is to Chris Collins is the character's name. Yes. Yeah, he's like a young, handsome 
doctor guy who is all of a sudden a character now. He he's like, a character now, yeah. Yeah, he pops in, fake masturbating, and now he's in the rest of this movie running around with Jeff Daniels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at, uh, oh, by the way, so uh, trivia, Easter egg uh, trivia time. Uh, you might be interested to know that this actor, um, Brian, Brian McNamara, McNamara, he, and this could explain why there was a clip of Family Ties playing on the TV. He, one of his first roles ever was as Greg, who's Alex's friend who gets killed in a car accident in a fam- a very special episode of Family Ties, I think. <laughs> Uh, Emmy Award winning episode, apparently. Wow. But that might be why Family Ties is that on the, has the to TV. Be. Is like yeah, a there's nod like an extended to... sequence We're of, family, a lot ties. of family Ties. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it's got Mike, Michael Gross from Tremors, is of course the dad in there. Mm-hmm. And then it's just these close ups of fucking Michael J. Fox on camera with, uh, the spi- or on the TV yeah. with a spider like hanging down in front of him. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so eventually th- this assistant realizes, all right, this actually is pretty serious. We have this, th- it is our, I, I think he realizes maybe it's the spider from Venezuela. There's a, there's a bunch of scenes in a row where they just catch all, e- they catch each other up on what the audience knows. Oh, this spider wa- killed photographer Manly. Manly was with you in Venezuela. He came back here. That's how that, it got here. This is here. when like Delbert's running around too because he's called in to exterminate spiders. Oh yeah, because and- he goes to the football coach's house because there's a spider there or whatever because the teenage daughter is in the shower she's and she's like there's a spider web in the shower yeah, and I think she grabs she it runs, and puts it in her hair. She actually like runs her hand through it and just doesn't notice and is like rubbing the web into her hair. And that's Fuck. super gross but then a spider leaps on her from the, the onto shower her ring face. onto her face. She doesn't react and then it like goes down goes her chest down her super close up on her cleavage. Yeah like side boob from either side as the spider goes down in between them. She basically just like waffle stomps it into the drain. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the the gag where she's out of the shower and then her dad runs in and she's standing there topless like facing him and they're both like ah! Ah! and the brother runs in. Ah! Well, that's when they call Delbert. He's like, I don't know. I don't think there's a spider. He's he's very comic book guy in this. Yeah, because he's like leaning over doing something, and the dad says, hey, "I think there's a spider." And this shot of him as he turns around and says this line is so fucking funny. He's just like, "Doubtful, Henry." It's even just his physique. Yeah, he's so fucking good for this character. He's such a big man, and he's got all his like bug equipment on, <laughs> and he's just so fucking into it. I love it. God, I love John Goodman. <laughs> that that reminded me too. There is a, a video game version of this movie. Oh, I forgot to write down what console it was for. If it was for, I might have. I don't 90, know. Ninety probably would have been maybe NES. I have no idea, but there is an arachnophobia video game. Great. I wonder if it's any good. Probably not. They're probably in the landfill next to the ETs. We learn around here because because Julian Sands explains it's like a it's a them style spread. Basically, we've got like their drone spiders, which isn't a thing, but it is here. And the spider that came from Venezuela gave birth to like a new, there's a A queen queen spider. And so so they're like, okay, we have to find where this nest is because that's our next generation of spiders. So we had to destroy that nest and then we will be good because they don't live a long time, apparently. The drones don't, but the, the general. Which I, is is that Big Bob? Is that from Venezuela? Is that the general? Uh, I'm not sure if the general is like is the original Venezuela spider. Okay, Maybe. it might be because that's the last one be. he fights. Yeah, and then the queen is also there. The queen has been given birth, I think, after that spider sex scene. The queen, uh, and then the queen is going to make a big egg sack full of spiders that can reproduce unlike the drone spiders it's a little who were sent convoluted out. it's convoluted yeah. and i'm like just give me to the just fucking give spiders me the spider. yeah. okay i know what we're here for just right, give me right, the fucking right. spiders <laughs> <laughs> because eventually they get back to jeff daniels's house and these spiders are fucking yeah because they, they're coming out of the sink when they oh my god they do the they do like the serial killer map thing and even john goodman yeah. is like i love this this is so fun <laughs> i love that little while like, oh, this they is got fun. the map out and they mark on each map where a person has died and they realize jeff daniels's house is in the middle it's a very stranger thing season two thing where it's like oh uh there's a radius of crop failures around a central mm. point what's in the center well hawkins lab or in this case jeff daniels is home yeah 
So they go there and they're like, okay, we all need to leave. And there's spiders ever. There's so many fucking spiders. Yeah. It sucks. There, it's real there, gross. There were a few times I wrote in my notes that this movie was a mistake and this scene was one of them. I was not <laughs> happy. It's just... Ugh, I don't know. Oh, you know what? Right before the spider invasion in the home is when Julian Sands dies. Yeah. Because he goes to the barn on his own and the general gets him. Yeah, because he... Should have went with Progressive. <laughs> the general. <laughs> this fucking this CGI fucking shitty ass spider. Spider with a white mustache. Oh, I'm the general. <laughs> singing at him no but he he <laughs> kind of touches the web and he's like supper time because he wants the, he wants to see the spider he just wants to see it so bad he can't help himself but that spider jumps on him r.i.p julian sands and then i'm sad R. yeah R. you were real sad r.i.p george he's just so handsome but he was like a kind of a i think he was kind of a bad i guy had here. my i definitely had my merchant ivory blinders <laughs> on to where I could only see him as like, he's George and he is good and he's just a scientist trying to do science. But I think maybe I missed all the <laughs> subtext that this guy's an asshole. <laughs> but, so maybe he got what he deserved. I don't know. <laughs> um, so the rest of the family is able to escape with the help of uh, random character Chris Cooper, who's I, now a thing. Not Chris Cooper. Chris Collins. Oh, Chris Collins. Who's Chris Cooper? Chris Cooper is the fucking. He, I mean, he's the neighbor in American Beauty. And he's oh, like yeah. this actor, Chris Cooper. That's right. My bad. Apologies. Yeah. Yes, Chris Collins, who introduces himself mid uh, spider infestation to the family, is like, "Hi, I'm Chris. I I'm like Chris. him. You yeah. said that you trusted Chris. I inst- yeah, I thought he was such good casting because I kind of instinctually trust him, and he just seems like a good kid. He seems like someone where if I interviewed him for like a production assistant job. I'd be like, yeah, he's that's that's the the guy. Yeah, he just seems reliable. I don't know. <laughs> he helps the family get out of there. And he falls like two stories because he's trying to climb down the, the trellis. Oh yeah, there's a trellis. If listen, if you're in a movie don't and you're climb climbing a trellis, trellis, it's gonna fall. You're gonna land on your back. <laughs> it, you're you're gonna fall. I'm mm-hmm. Sorry. Or you're gonna break off a piece and then it's evidence, like in <gasps> Knives Out. Yeah. Oh shit. There you go. Uh, so the family's outside. John Goodman's there. He whips out his special batch of corrosive Dude, yeah, shit. Yeah, he's like, he's just, I'm back, motherfuckers. I mean, he's got all his acid that he just, he's he's firing this at their house, um, <laughs> dissolving their home in the process. Like, yes, he's killing the spiders, but also, it's like, we could just nuke the town. Like, they would get rid of the spiders, but also we've nuked this entire town or like in frogs where yeah. uh the dad and that is like why can't we just uh, spray pesticides everywhere and sam elliott's like i mean we could do that <laughs> but, so that's kind of what's going on here we're just melting jeff daniels's house <laughs> but it, the jeff daniels was unable to escape because he falls through he falls o- over the, the banister he's on the second story and i forget what prompts him to fall, but he falls and falls through, through the his floor, floor, which we established early. The house is like just all shitty. Bad wood. Ba- bad wood. Got to replace, replace it with good, it wood. With good wood. <laughs> Thank you, John Goodman. Uh, he falls into the basement, a.k.a. The his cellar, wine cellar. Yeah. The wine cellar that mm-hmm. he wants, which by the way, watching this movie, I was like, what's up with wine cellars? And you have like a hundred bottles of wine. You're not going to drink all those. I know. It just, I mean, I guess if you're collecting, it's, it's weird. But why are you collecting that? But I do love that's another character. Character. John Goodman's character says, "Oh, we co- you collect my I collect beer cans myself. And I have a it's like a Miller misprint. Yeah, like a 1974 oh, only, Miller misprint. They only printed about a hundred cans. You should have your husband come over and have like I just oh, I, I he's so <laughs> <laughs> like I dude I would totally love to go look at that weirdo beer can collection. <laughs> he could probably talk for way too long about each can. Yeah." <laughs> Yeah, so now Jeff Daniels is in the basement, and this is the the big action, Amblin action sequence where first he fights the queen, and he, is that the one he throws into the electrical box? No, that's like, the general. No, the general. The queen is the big one. No, the- no, no, no. He fights the queen first. Uh-uh. Yeah, uh-huh. The general, because after he kills the queen, which I believe he melts into the, like the fuse box or some shit. Then he's like, he runs into the the big bad, the ultimate, and he's like, the general. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I, I know it's confusing because it's the like, the queen just should always spiders. be the biggest one. You would think that, right? <laughs> this movie's sexist. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the general. It's all low key problematic and gross. 
I'm going to write my think piece on why this movie it should be canceled. I'm sure Salon will publish it. Salon, dude, Salon is ready for this think piece. <laughs> but, like, he lights the general on fire. I'm like, cool, we're done. But then the general, like, jumps out at him and he has to shoot it with his nail gun yeah. into the big old egg sack, which I looks I mean, disgusting. I like that. I like that part. I just wish, yeah, maybe that sequence. Just consolidate it a little bit. I do think that sequence, though, is, like, in parts, effectively pretty tense. And it's Jeff Daniels acts it so well. And it's hard to like act in a scene where the creatures are so small Mm -hmm. i think a creature movie is maybe a bit easier to buy into if the creature is like a giant anaconda terrifying and Mm -hmm. feels maybe more dangerous than like you know something that's so tiny i think you know i think something that like the birds does it amazingly where it's like you know i think this was inspired by the birds or i even think of there's that episode of the twilight zone where that old lady uh, has, like, her home gets invaded by, like, these like, UFO men, these, like, tiny dudes. Oh, yeah. And she's, like, hitting him with the broom and stuff. But stuff like that where it's – I think it's kind of challenging to make something tiny feel like a threat. But this this does it well. I guess the uh, – uh, Jamie from Mythbusters, this was, like, the That's first right. thing he worked on. He built animatronics for this. Yeah. Of the, the general and the queen, which I thought was neat. A lot of it was done with magnets and stuff again. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah, I like that. That's cool. Eventually shoots that thing into the the disgusting-looking egg sack. That. Fuck that shit. Right as it's spawning a bunch Ew, of yeah, demon little it's about, fuckers it's, it coming out. It starts hatching, and there's all these spiders. Oh. Do, yeah, like, on, do not watch this movie if you don't like oh, spiders. Oh, yeah. No, you'll be fucked. The, the, this done. is not like... <laughs> Oh, it's not like them where the ants look like shit and they're clearly fake, which is part of the charm and it's it's wonderful. But like these are real spiders and even the fake ones look pretty real. It's it's so gross. It's yeah. so gross. Uh, and then he's saved from fire, I guess, yeah, by John Goodman. Yeah, John, John Goodman pulls him out. He's yeah. like, you're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> and he already killed all the ones outside, just spraying them away. Mm-hmm. So... We're all good. Happy end, and the family moves back to San Francisco. Where there's a joke where they're like, we're finally good and safe here, and then there's an earthquake. This, okay, <laughs> I'm just going to say this scene, and may I don't know if I'm right, but I'm, this is my guess. This feels like a, re, a reshoot that, like, they edited this movie and thought, you know what, we need a stinger scene, and they went and shot this. Because yeah. this scene looks like shit. It's clearly a set. It is, like, the most bare bones shitty looking house like it looks like a film the kids aren't set. there the kids aren't They're there off the screen exactly yeah. the kids aren't there minimal set there's some cardboard boxes the cityscape outside fake as fuck yeah. it's like clearly a studio and then an earthquake happens because it's san francisco after they're like oh we're back you know we have things Back to having control over our lives. And, and it seems like improvised too, because like the earthquake happens and like, oh, that was just uh, the house settling. Yeah, that was just the house settling. Yeah, uh, the, yeah okay, it's nothing fine, to worry about. Yeah, yeah we're fine. It, just like talking over if each I, other. If I would, I would bet money on that being a. a like, get Jeff and Harley back yeah, for one day. For real. The fact that the kids aren't there is also what makes me. It think. might even be, and I, I won't, you know, say this for certain because I don't remember. It might just be a single shot that maybe like zooms out and then is them in the I earthquake. Think so. it might be. Yeah. Maybe there's some shot reverse, but. Yeah. <laughs> That's my guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, arachnophobia, I am interested in watching Eight Legged Freaks. I kind of am too. I don't know if people would object to us doing another spider movie, right? You know, one after yeah. the other. But people have, like, this and Eight Legged Freaks were both highly requested. So I would just like to compare and contrast. I kind of would too. So maybe I'll see how people feel about it. Okay. But if people are like, please no more spider movies. <laughs> yeah. Although I feel like Eight Legged Freaks because they're so big is that might be more might tolerable. Be different. I don't know. I I mix that up in my head always with Evolution. Oh, and I know those are two very different movies, but right around the same time. Really? I feel I would like have assumed Evolution. Eight Legged Freaks was maybe a little earlier, but I might be wrong. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows though? There are plenty more creature movies, including a movie called. Uh, creature but it's not just creature it's what's the jaws guy peter benchley's creature that we just got in the the mail from a fan who sent it to us peter benchley's creature (laughs) that looks interesting just from the pictures on the back it's like a shark guy so plenty to choose from and we're only 
Well, we're getting close to the end of the summer. We're getting close to the end of July. So another month of creature stuff. Yeah. And like we'll see how the rest of this year is. Like it's uh we're twenty twenty as much as like it's it's both like the year where nothing is happening and the year where a ton of stuff is happening. Like we have to we're rescheduling our wedding, which sucks. And that's a whole thing. Mm -hmm. Um we're maybe moving fingers crossed my car got stolen your car got stolen <laughs> just that like was there's just weird. a lot so a weird year well man. yeah we'll see what the rest of this year looks like for the podcast because i'm a bit like just strapped for time and just energy emotional energy <laughs> yeah. to spend on things yeah and that's okay hon thank you uh, dead meat store has new oh yeah stuff. new merch we've got all that's nice is selling like hotcakes i know i made some oh that's nice oh, that's nice. nice we've got a redesign let's get to the kill shirt and i also did a, a business shirt. business yeah so yeah. check that out deadmeatstore.com but and some people were like you should do a title card shirt that's fucking there that too exists. that's that already exists. there you should do some slow ass motherfucking that's there too it's the the slow ass motherfucking Jeff Memorial Walkathon T-shirt. I love that take. I on love it. that shirt. Yeah. yeah, instead of just like a picture of him and saying slow ass yeah, motherfucking yeah. Jeff, fuck that. It's a commemorative T-shirt. So follow Dead Meat on social media at Dead Meat James on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm Carebeck C A R E B E C C on Twitter and Instagram. And Dead Meat Pod at Gmail dot com for any emailed thoughts or what have you. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll see you next week. All right. Until then, I'm James. I'm Chelsea. This has been the Dead Meat Podcast.